Welcome to the Early Crow. We're going to dive into everything Australian sports. This time for the big A to win the game for Australia from nowhere. Articulate why we want to have a bet. Yeah, we love golf. A little pep up. And a look at across every other sport that tips our fans. Where's Pappenhausen now? <laughs> Welcome to the Early Crow. Rule number one, never force a bet. Paps. Episode 6, we've got a bit of momentum now, uh, fighter on the move, we have a huge guest this week, uh, it's been a, it's a busy week and it's going to be one of the great weekends of sport and racing in our country, how are you going? Mate, real keen for uh, for Jack Farjack to come on, um, fighting this weekend, so real keen for that chat, but it's been a big week, it's um, <clears throat> obviously uh, finals in the air, you can smell it uh, tomorrow night. Uh, big game! Can't wait to get get down to Melbourne and get get into the uh, get into the Blues and uh, yeah, can't wait for it. It's uh, obviously going to be ninety plus thousand there. It's what you it's what you dream of and um, it's why you play. Um, on that, uh, what are we doing about the hair? Because I've got a little bit of concern. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it is a, it is a bit long and um, haven't played in a couple of weeks. So I'll get a little sharpen up from my man and in Sydney and uh, yeah, and get a sharpen up before we head down. Is that a bit of a superstition for you as a footballer? <laughs> nah, definitely not. I'm, it's just, uh, I don't know, keep, keep yourself sharp before a big game, mate, you know. Don't want to look a bit rugged. Dress, dress to impress. And when, when you've got to wear a Swans it. uniform, all, all you can really control is, people is your like, hair and your tats. <laughs> um, what uh, sort of good. superstitions do you have? Do you have any before you play? Uh, I'm not, I'm a bit of a... Sort of a old school sort of operator. I like. I'm don't really like warming up much. Um, the guys sort of say you 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 could get to the the strength and conditioning guys say you'd rock up 20 minutes before the game. Go go do the team warm up and play, and that's pretty much right. So I get a bit bored before the game. I go out and kick snaps and from the pockets left and right, and I don't know. Have to kick a couple in a row before I go over the the left and all the right, and then I uh, kick about 10 set shots and then go in and. Yeah, twiddle me thumbs and get some physio and all the etc. But yeah, I'm a bit old school. I just like to keep it pretty basic and not think about the game too much. And, and until I uh, sort of walk out into the race, and that's when I start getting a bit nervous and a bit excited and, and get amongst the boys. Do you find that you have to sort of try and sometimes get yourself going? Like when you're walking out the race, do you go, oh, hang on, I need to sort of rev myself up just a little bit? Like, come on, man, you better nah. play footy. No, if you uh. Nah, I'm always ready to go. I, I sort of hold it in, I hold it in, and hold it in because I'm, I just want to fucking let rip and get out there. So I'm always ready to go and um, buzzing and yeah, I've actually, actually can't wait to walk around the uh, corner of the MCG and see it absolutely humming and not one, well twenty bit, twenty thousand we'll have, but about seventy thousand Carlton fans building us when we run out. I'm looking forward to that. <clears throat> yeah, but that, that 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 they're nervous. Like they're nervous. <laughs> we, we've been here. We do this all the time. We've got more finals experience than them. Um, this is just another day in the office for us. They're nervous. They look scared. And uh, I reckon if we just chip away, chip away, chip away, the, the cracks will start to show. It must be just genuinely very, very exciting. Is it almost too exciting, preparation-wise? What's ahead of you? Uh, no, it's, you just got to you got to keep it under wraps a little bit. You don't want to get ahead of yourself and. Uh, you got to think about the game a bit, I think, and um, you got to prepare yourself for what's to come. But um, till the till that day or that night, you sort of takes a little bit to get to sleep because you're excited and um, yeah. But I think as a as a player, you got to think about it a little bit, like I said, and but not too much to wind yourself up and lose your energy. So no, I'm, I'm pretty cool about it now. But come come Friday morning and have a coffee and things like that, it'll start to wind up a bit. <laughs> Uh, speaking of, well, it's hopefully it's a famous win on Friday night at the G for the for the Swans. But speaking of famous wins for the Swans, North Sydney Oval Sunday. Uh, boy oh boy, where we? Wasn't everyone? Mate, up that was uh, like it was just like it's just like good. Everyone just loved. Mate, it was uh, it was unreal. It was it was a bit like watching the Matildas in it. Like I was just mm. that invested in just it was it was great. I've of uh, yeah, it was would have had all the boys there. We we got around the girls and uh, when they run out, um, and then obviously after the game. But 
mate, I was, it was the third uh, third quarter and we went down by five goals, I think, and we hadn't even kicked, we'd kicked three goals for the game and I'm thinking, geez, it's tough to come back from here. And obviously there's not as many scores uh, like the like the men's, but um, to come back from where they were is was an incredible effort. It was, was incredible, really. Um, Ali Morford, the ruckman, was just... She's a weapon. Coach. She was in there. Like she, yeah, she, she is like a cheat code, isn't it? That's a great way to put it. Yeah, it's like a video game. You yeah, just she, got like it was like, like you're designing your players, and you just you, you're making you're playing NBA, and you're just like, yeah, I'll go seven two, and I'm athletic. <laughs> like it's not fair. Bloody own. It was like she was in under twelve, grabbing her ruck, kicking. Yeah, and uh, yeah, she's uh, she was real good. I love watching her. And then obviously, a bit of an alpha in the in the women's league is uh, Chloe Malloy. She's Come from Collingwood, she's our marquee player, and she was uh, very clutch in the last couple of quarters. She was getting tightly tagged, and then stood up when the big when the guns needed to stand up. Kicked one of the great goals, selling candy, check side from about thirty five out um, is very hard to do, and she's dobbed it. And I reckon that gave the girls a spark. It was a bit, it's a bit like when Bud when Bud would do something freakish when we needed him to, he'd, he'd do that, and it'd really spark us up. And I reckon that's a bit the same for the girls, and they got the job done. One of the great wins. First uh, win in history, big moment for the club, and I think we recognise it very well. Hopefully, we can roll off the back of that and a bit, bit more uh, success. Um, I'll tell you who I'm um, sort of close tagged and a little bit of the social media from the Swans has been outstanding around the girls, <laughs> and it's a nice little piece of uh, Lukey Parker presenting one of the one of the girls for something. And I noticed that uh, our man wasn't at a Seven Eleven; he was planted right just right there next to us. So full credits to the Liz, um, front and centre work. Learning from the great man yourself, like you're doing it next to Bud Jacina on the on the, on the <laughs> ground. Liz is starting to operate at higher levels off the court, and it's good to see. Um, Friday night was pretty cool. We have uh, it's the first horse we've raced together. Uh, it's been a sort of thereabouts on Saturday on in Saturday races, but we headed to um, Packenham for forty one thousand on on the, on the table. And uh, I, I sort of preferred it because we had the dulcet tones of Terence Bailey, who uh, I'm mates with, and therefore he felt it was okay to sort of hang shit on our horse uh, before it raced. I think he called him a robber, or if he took the balaclava off or something like that. But uh, it was a, it was a very, very enjoyable Friday night. I couldn't get there, obviously you couldn't, but I couldn't get there because my son <laughs> developed the obsession with sharting, and uh, my missus is out of action, so I've I've been a very, very busy boy at home, but. Geez, it was a good, good win, and how enjoyable was that? Mate, it was uh, incredible. But I've actually been holding in this light all week, um, and I've just held it for this show because I know it would get a good reaction. I actually forgot to back it. <laughs> <laughs> what? I, we were talking like all night. Oh. Mate, I don't know. <laughs> and for anyone out there, it's paid twenty dollars and backed into twelves. It, it and was twenty dollars, and I told you, I said, "Let's have a bet," and it started to crunch. And then TV goes, Mate. "Oh, the male bad boys have had a bet here. This thing's been twenties into twelves. It'd be a good <laughs> chance if you didn't wear a balaclava." Mate, I don't, and uh, I've been holding this in just for this moment because I thought you'd Fuck. lose it. But <laughs> and I, I, I don't know what I did, but I was obviously someone's obviously called me because I went into my Neds and it's in my bet slip. And I'm like, oh no! And then I've got, oh no! And then I've gone. I've You're gone. Oh no! Bloke. Can't get You're on there. Good bloke for not like not like ruining everyone's fun by like sulking about that. Geez, that's a good by you. It's, it's a and shit then, effort, but it's a, it's a good and, thing to do. Yeah. So then I've gone to Betfair. I'm like, oh, both of these more on Betfair. Went to went to put some money on it on Betfair, at like 13s or 14s. And you know when Betfair doesn't take your price, it only <laughs> took like 20 bucks of it. I was like, oh no. <laughs> So I was screaming at the TV because I obviously got a good, good good enough percentage in it. So it's, it was a nice win, but it could have been better. But no, I just thought I'd hold, hold that off for the show. Oh. Um, and idea. Fuck it. Wow. You're a good bloke. Like, a lot of people would just suck up the lux off that. And uh, yeah, well done. Full <laughs> credit to you. Um, what else has been going on? I suppose the only other things at NRL, we went 3-0. and uh, The Lizard, still no Lizard, but... I don't know if we need him. We thought we needed him last week. Maybe now we don't need him. Uh, finals this week in NRL. We'll get to that uh, in a little bit. Anything else? Yeah, we were very good in the rugby. It was good to be back and looking forward to this week. Big week. Bit of golf. I played a bit of golf last week, actually. Got How the many bug times real bad. Um, 
and yeah, you know when you just start getting back into it and you you just oh, you just want to keep playing and keep playing. So I'm really looking forward to um, the off season and beating you in that game of golf we're meant to be playing. <laughs> Uh, how many times did you play last week? Um, just a, just a couple. Are you putting in scorecards? <laughs> uh, well, I didn't play comp, so. Um, oh, look at him go! Punters practice. at home. <laughs> this is what operating at a very high level is, and being a bit of a rotor. So he's putting in the hours to improve his golf game, but not putting in the scorecards. So the handicap's going to stay nice and fat. But he's going to present in the mounting yard like with a much better golfer than his handicap suggests. Doing everything he can, I, it won't make a difference. Though. I played. I played uh, on when was it Friday? In the wind was howling at the Bonnie Doon. I had I think I had 11, 11 points on the front, and I'm like, oh no, this is an absolute dog of a day. And I've had nineteen or something on the back. So wow, it's there. It's just got to. It's just got to. Uh, just got to just put the eighteen holes together, and I think I'll wipe your ass. <laughs> Right, hey, why don't we uh, why don't we start talking to uh, Jack Farjack Jenkins, UFC guru, champion fighter. Our first proper uh, proper guest, Tom, outside of um, outside of the lizard. Who um, I'm not sure how much of a football man you are, Farjack, but uh, the lizard made an enormous debut. He came on, he went three and zero, and then he's like the last time he was seen was at a ball in a Seven Eleven. But we have Jack Jenkins on, UFC fighter. Um, Victorian thoroughbred, uh, nicknamed the thoroughbred as well. Uh, Jack, welcome to the Early Crow. How you going? Yeah, good. Very well. You know, it's a fight week for me, so uh, a little bit hungry, but uh, looking forward to chatting some racing and maybe some UFC, whatever you boys want to chat about. Tommy, do you want to um, steer some questions into Jack and we'll get rolling with a bit of, like, a little bit of background just for our listeners? Yeah, we'll start with. Um so obviously I had 12 wins, two losses of one nine fights uh, on the trot. Haven't lost since 2019. Um, the last, it's obviously been spoke about. Last uh, seven, broke five legs in the last seven fights, which is, uh, <laughs> which is, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, but I'll probably just touch on a few a UFC. You said, um, you said publicly that your perfect world would be for Volk to uh, break the record uh, for most title defenses, and then you to come in and. And fighting for that title, what, what, uh, what is that sort of? Where would you, when would you want to be able to do that? Like, what, how far down the track? Uh, probably, probably like a perfect timeline. Probably eighteen months to twenty four months away. Um, you know, it's uh, I still have a, I still have some little holes in my game that I want to fix. I'm probably not at my athletic peak for a fighter just yet either. So, um, I, I want to fix a few things and get some things right on the big stage, and then that'd be that'd be good to go. But there's uh, a lot of water to go under the bridge before that becomes an option for both of us. And I, how, I've done a bit how, of research yesterday, and like I'm not a massive UFC man, but I'm becoming one just off the research I've done yesterday. You're a punter. My understanding oh, yeah. is you could have locked in a safer contract about four or five months ago, and you said no, 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 Donna, you wait. I'm going to go to Sydney, I'm going to put on a show and I'm going to get more money. But you are yeah, betting on yourself big time. Yeah, 100%. Um, so after my last fight, which was in June, um, most people, if you go 2-0 and on your first contract, like if you have two wins on your first contract, the UFC will renegotiate with you to give you more fights. Um, that, you know, that offer, that was there for me. And I said, look, I'm not really interested in renegotiating right now. Not because I don't want more fights with the UFC, just because I thought my value would be a lot higher after this fight in Sydney. And uh, I wasn't willing to, you know, trade a little bit of safety for a longer term contract for, for the chance to make more money and, and, you know, get what I think I'm worth. It's a bit like, uh, I don't know if you've watched uh, MJ, but not on the same level, obviously, but MJ's knocked back night deals all the way through. Um, and then you're doing the same. So it's, uh, it's unreal. Hopefully, uh, I'll be there Sunday, actually, cheering you on. It'll be packed. Are you coming down? Yeah, I'm coming down yeah, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The UFC it's got your tickets? Yeah, yeah, Liz was saying that, yeah. I'm actually with, yeah, uh, Monst- I'm actually with Monster as well. Um, oh, so nice. They can uh, they can help out as well, which is huge. Are you a yeah, big, uh, are you with Monster good. as well, AFR? No, nah, not with Monster, no. Nah. Don't have an energy drink sponsor yet. Have to get them on board. We should have got your flat cap for the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what's uh, what's this week look like for you? So you, you've you've got to cut a fair bit of weight to, to make the weight in. Is that and that's tomorrow Friday? Yeah, you got to cut cut the normal amount of weight tonight. Um, 
So weigh-ins on Thursday. Sorry, weigh-ins on Friday here. You're up. Friday at 4 p.m. is my weigh-in. So I'll have to get a little bit off tonight um, and then do the rest tomorrow. So probably talking like five kilos in the next sort of 36 hours, which uh, is about normal for me, about normal. I, you know, it's, it's shitty, but it's what you do. What does that involve? Uh, what's the process look like? Um, tonight, I'll, I'll just work out tonight. Like, I won't do anything crazy tonight. I'll I'll do a workout for about an hour, and I'll probably drop two kilos doing that, and then I'll wake up in the morning and um, see where I'm at, and hopefully I've only got about two to go from there, two, two and a half. If I float a kilo overnight, and then uh, tomorrow morning I'll jump in a bath and get a sweat on in a bath, and then I'll get out of the bath and jump in a sleeping bag for 30 minutes, and that'll probably do another kilo and a half, and then I'll go again after that, see how much i got left to go. It's not a pleasant experience by any means. So you're fully fasting, no food at all, or just water? or just? No, I've got food. Um, it's just like very light on. No carbs, no sugar, no salt. Um, like I had like fucking scrambled eggs this morning, mate. You wouldn't believe like any, like even the most basic food to me right now, like something that you would just like, you wouldn't even think about walking past like a 7-Eleven or a bakery or something in the morning. I just look at it and I'm like, oh, I would absolutely demolish that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then ga- and then like... Uh, fight fight night. What do you just smash yeah. in heaps of stuff, heaps of fluids? Well, so this is a unique event. This is a unique event. I've never ever had this before, where we're weighing in Friday and I don't fight till Sunday. So I've got two full sleeps to rehydrate and replenish. Usually, you only have twenty four or thirty six hours. Um, so I have a little bit longer than that, which is it's going to be interesting to see because you don't want to get too big either. Like you don't want to just stuff your face and then feel full and, and crap when you go in there to compete. So I think it'll be good. I'll get like, so just to give you some context, like I'll weigh in at 66 kilos. And then by the time I go to bed that night, so I weigh in at 4 PM. By the time I go to bed that night, I'll be 73. <laughs> Uh, I, I could uh, see I could see Pat's putting the weight back on, but I've I've <laughs> seen him operate like around the house. Like he's a, he's a he loves junk food. He could not you you would not be as <laughs> oh, street weight. Pat's Pat's you and I'd get along, mate. Like yeah. my the bane the bane of my life when I'm in fight camp is just sitting there going like, geez, I could smash a block of chocolate or <laughs> somebody so, somebody get get me a zinger burger or something. It's oh. the worst. Nice can of Coke's delicious as well. Smash that oh, smash zinger burger down with a can of Coke. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that's commitment to, to shit so, food. Like, I'm so get what, the can of so coke from somewhere s- else and then the zinger burger. <laughs> <laughs> so you're getting to 66 kilos. What what height are you? Uh, I'm 168 centimeters, like five seven. That's actually yeah. a question from the lizard, who's uh, petrified <laughs> of his boss. Um, how tall are you, Pat? Who's taller? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've got him well covered, but I uh, wouldn't want to step in the ring with him not that much. <laughs> <laughs> how tall are you, Paps? I'm 178. No, you're not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. No that's, way. He's, mate, he's so really. wide. So wide. That's what I've... Like, when... Because um, I, I thought, like, all... Like, even, like, Conor McGregor, I thought he would have been... He's, like... I thought he'd be huge, like... Like, one... I don't know, 186 foot, but he's tiny as well, isn't he? How, how tall is he? Yeah, he's, like, one, he's like 175. Yeah, so I was like, when when I heard that, I was like, gee, whiz, these boys must be tiny, and that goes to show why they why you boys fight so in the lighter weights. It's amazing. Yeah, because when you look at you, they're like you're absolutely like ripped and shredded, but like yeah. there's obviously there's no fat. It doesn't out of you. always look like that. Trust me, it doesn't <laughs> always look like that. <laughs> who who are some of your favourite fighters over the like, last little bit? Who um, inspires you? Well, my favourite fighter ever growing up was Jose Aldo. I loved Jose Aldo. Um, you know, since I, I love what Connor did for the sport, uh, he's huge. DC, I was a really big fan of DC, Daniel Cormier. I actually, the the great man, um, I got him on at uh, the Lakes, play golf tomorrow morning. So the big DC owes me a favor, actually. So I hope he does me well in the commentary booth. Bloody I've seen you um, swing at a golf club. You and Paps actually have a lot in common, like yeah, aggressive, lefty. short swing, massive power lefties. Yeah, love that. Love we that. Have to, uh, we definitely have to tee up a game in uh, in the off season when we're down Melbourne for sure. Yeah, come down to Melbourne. We'll, we'll have a game for sure. What about you John are, Jones? He looks like one of the all time operators, like a proper alpha who just delivers under oh, any circumstance. He's an absolute weapon. He's the goat. Like everyone, everyone asks me this question. I say, well, you have to have two categories. I think um, 
if you include people in the GOAT discussion who popped for performance enhancers, if you're allowed to include them, then it's unequivocally Jones is the GOAT. Like, he's absolutely the best ever. Um, if you don't include people who popped for steroids, then, you know, you, you can have a bit of a debate about who comes next. But if you're allowed to include John Jones, then there's no secondary. Like, there's no... There's him and then there's Daylight. Mm. It's he's a, he's an absolute he's a fucking specimen, isn't he? Like, yeah. What, he's a big boy. Like he's heavyweight, obviously. What what would he be? He'd be what height's a heavyweight, and then a what what's their weight? I at? think Jones is six three or six four. <laughs> That's a big boy. What's the best Probably crowd you've bit... ever fought in front of? Best crowd, Perth for sure. Yeah. Perth. Crowd Why was that? Just like insane. just a massive pump and Aussie crowd just really got got, got you going. Pump and Aussie crowd, they were all like absolutely fired up. It was uh, it was mayhem. And the, the crowd, the show started at like 7 a.m. or something, like 7.30 in the morning so we could make East Coast pay-per-view time in the U.S. And it was just insane. Like it was crazy how loud it was for like 7 o'clock in the morning. So there'd be, a chance that, my um, there'd be a chance that Sydney will be almost bigger? Yeah, it will be interesting to see. You know, if, if, if Perth was anything to go by, it's going to be massive here. But I went in and I had my fight um, and it's like dark in there and everyone's on the beers and stuff. And you you walk out and then I got on my bus back to the hotel and I made it in time for the breakfast buffet back at the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> and they're already on the beers. Yeah. Full oh, credit to them. How'd you get into it? Like what? Like what? I just can't imagine myself. What draws like, someone? Be, yeah. yeah. What draws yeah, someone to um, go? I'm gonna I'm gonna start like training harder than most other sports, and then prepare to like try and really hurt people. Yeah. Well, um, so my brother took me up to a kickboxing gym when I was 13, and he was fighting at the time, um, and he'd just gone up there for fitness and really enjoyed it, but. You know, he kind of just said, yeah, come up, I'll, I'll show you around and that sort of stuff. So went to this kickboxing gym. It was just like a hard joint. Like it was old, um, out the back of a tyre fitting centre. Like they just transformed the back half of the shed into like a gym. Um, smelt like deep heat all the time. Uh, it, it was just a real grungy, like hard setup. And uh, I just loved it. Um, it, it. It was like, I don't know, perhaps if there's something similar for you, but when you when you start kicking goals, you just get a satisfaction, and it's like, yeah, I want to keep kicking goals, and then you want to go to the highest level of it. And when I was sparring and touching people up and winning those battles and stuff, you go, Fuck, I want to do this. This is really fun. And then um, you get more and more competitive, and from then I sort of said, I want to fight in the UFC, and I've just stuck at it since then. And it's been a long and arduous path to get here, but all worth it now. Yeah, it's it's. We had um, Volk come in to the club one day, and it's it's not all uh, what's that saying? Rainbows and roses and rainbows, or Sun, not all sunshines sunshine, and rainbows. Sunshine and rainbows, like even like it would have been tough for you at the start. You got to build your way up, build your way up. Obviously, Volk was the same. He's building, build his way up, build his way up. Um, but until you sort of make that UFC and really get there, it's, it can be tough yards, can't it? Oh, for sure. Well, like. I suppose you could compare it to like when I'm 18, so I finish school and I want to start fighting. Um, you know, I'll at most from fighting, I might make like for your first three fights, you might get paid like 500 bucks a piece mm. for your first few fights. But if you're not taking it seriously and you don't want to get to the UFC, then you, you still got to train twice a day. You've still got to do your cardio. You still got to pay your strength coach. You still got to do all that stuff. So, like I was, I was training in the morning, training in the afternoon, and then at five o'clock I'd go to the pub and pour beers and serve meals until midnight, and then go to bed and wake up in the morning to drive into Melbourne to train again. So like you, you, you learn to live on an amazingly small amount of money as a fighter on the regional scene. I'll tell you that much. Uh, and you, you're a Bacchus Marsh boy, Victorian. You love football. But yeah, I love the footy. Love me footy. I Who's grew your up. Team? Like, I, I was never a good footy player. Like I played rugby with school just because I was terrible, had no foot skills. Um, rugby union? Small, yeah, rugby union. Scrum half? Small, couldn't mark you as a scrum half. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I, I grew up big Sydney fan, actually. my uh, You know, I have some family who played for Sydney uh, from South Melbourne when they moved to Sydney. And uh, so 
a lot of the family go to South Melbourne Swans and uh, yeah, I carried that on and I was at the flag in 05 sitting in the second row with me old man, which was pretty good. I've been following him since. Same, I was there as well. Yeah, I, I, I was um I was in the pocket where uh, Luke Ablett switched it to Cuz, and I, I was I was paralytic. I was uh, I was eighteen, like messy drunk, and I was almost in tears. And my old man's like, "It's not over, it's not over." That was a like so. Leo Barry was like thirty five meters to my left when he took that that mark. That grab, geez, that would have yeah, been nice. Right. That's unreal. That was, that was uh, one of the one of the great games. I was I think I was ten. Oh. I yeah, I was ten. That whole that whole that whole final series as well, like the Swans getting past Geelong, Nick Davis in the fourth quarter yeah. at the SCG, that was huge. Mm. Well, I think they that, was, that was like they a real to... Swans club. Like that was like a if it was a game of FIFA, they were like a lower <laughs> ranks team than the, than the other teams, but they were just tougher and their effort was better and they grind and they grind and we got there. It was I love the Swans. I've loved the Swans my whole life, and hundred uh, percent. That was a that was a proper proper year for us. Set the tone, perhaps. Bloody oath. Well, uh, do you want to get into a bit of? I suppose we we talked about a bit of outside stuff as well. You love your golf and your your. Rap. Do you want to get into races, Dicko, or a bit more about? Um, there's a couple of questions that we got, so we'll just roll through them. They'll be quick, and then we'll talk ponies, because because Farjack's a big pony man. Like golf, ponies, <laughs> and bashing people. We've got to get into the bashing people stuff, Tom. <laughs> but apart from that, we're on the same page. So. A uh, couple of questions. Um, favorite moment you've witnessed racing? I think it's for everyone. In racing, uh, what's your favorite, favorite thing you've seen? You've got to have been there. Oh, I had to be at the races? Yep. Um, favorite? Well, it's actually probably a, uh, a, good, a good one for me. Like, I'm a big Zaki fan. I've, I've always loved Zaki um, and... You know, backed it. I like the story of him being the important Annabelle Neesham sort of first really successful horse and that sort of stuff. And uh, I uh, watched him win back to back stakes, and it was with my dad and that sort of stuff. And I'd said to dad beforehand, he said, "Oh, we're going to back Zaki," and we had a bit of a punters thing going through the whole spring. And I said, "Oh, we'll wait to see what happens in the Champions Mile, and if Alligator Blood leads and wins from the front, then we'll back Zaki. We'll have a big chunk on it, and then." Alligator blood led from the front in the mile and won, and I said, "All right, let's go back it." And we backed it with about four different bookies, I reckon. And then oh, um, she, she was we, Jamie Carr. Whole, hung, she hung on the we fence. On the, we're, yeah, we were on the we were on the roof at the members in Flemington, and I reckon half the roof was on it. And um, when it turned the corner, I'm like, "Oh, it's going to go here, going to go." And when he took off and won, I was wrapped and <laughs> went down and collected all the money from the bookies. And my dad hadn't put a bet on all spring; he was just sort of trusting me with it. And then by the end of that night, he was walking around with $100 notes as a pocket square in his jacket, just <laughs> carrying on. And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm ringing mum, going, mum, come get him out of here. <laughs> it's, a long, it's a long way to like the, 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 the butt cheeks really clench when they roll past you on the, on the members at Flemington if you're oh, in front and you've got a good yeah. bet, like you are just praying to God. And in the last like 75 minutes, you can't tell in a tight yeah. finish. Yeah. 100% you're like oh is he gonna get there is he gonna yeah. get there but I thought I thought I was pretty confident because he went quick I'm like if he goes slow they're gonna just come over the top of him but if he goes a bit quicker here and, and gets him off the bit early then he'll be able to steve him off yeah I love that that's spot on um l- little cheeky question here which I think relates to both of you to be honest because I'm concerned about this as a Swans fan which now I know Farjack is as well uh for you Farjack what's the hair mullet care regime because it's impressive that's from Mark <laughs> And then from me, myself, Tom, uh, are we going to sort of tidy up the sides because it's getting a bit slack and I want to see a real it? cherry ripe game day. It's a massive, <laughs> massive game for I don't know. Yeah, well, because uh, I haven't played in a few weeks, mate. You know me, I just got a haircut before the game. But uh, nah, so I'll get, I'll get my uh, man in Sydney to cut me up after this, I reckon, a little sharpen up. Um, Friday night footy, uh, elimination final. Doesn't get bigger than that, so you've got to look sharp, Dicko. Have you got any superstitions like that, Farjack, with your hair or nah, I just, pre-fight well, rig? The only thing I'm superstitious about now is like I feel like the moustache and the mullet is almost like synonymous with my brand now. So I feel like yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm in a position where if I get rid of it, people are going to be like, oh, like that sucks. 
Yeah. So I feel you. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to see how I go over the next few few months with it, but I'm over it now. I've had it for a few years. I'm, I'm done with getting a perm every four or five months. It's shit. I, <laughs> I agree. <laughs> you're, on a, you're on a roll. You can't look. Yeah, I yeah, agree, though, with that, that mow and mullet. I agree. You've got to keep it. It's like yeah, I know. It's like, it's like yeah. the brand now. Like, and yeah. I never yeah. intended it for to be that. I just wanted it as a haircut. Now I'm stuck with it forever. <laughs> <laughs> right, should we roll into a bit of ponies, like actual horses that are racing on Saturday and try and find a few winners? Yeah, let's do it. Time to talk uh, ponies, eyes on ponies. Fajak's been kind enough. He's going to hang around. He loves ponies as much as we do. We're going to start at Rose Hill where the rail's in the true. Currently a good four. Tom, talk to me about the weather up there. Are we going to start a good four or are we going to pivot into a little bit of a softer track? Mate, uh, the weather is unbelievable here. The weather's turning into um, really nice spring weather in Sydney. This is the best time of the year in Sydney. Uh, 26 today up here in Sydney if you if you uh, are up here. It's unbelievable. Um, and then tomorrow we go down to Melbourne, it's 11 degrees, so no, it should be good. Um, but anyway, we'll get into the races. It's going to be a good four, like you said. It's uh, railing the true at Rose Hill. Plays a little bit uh, on speed in the shorter races and um, a little bit probably probably fair to um, first half of the field for the, for the longer races. But we'll start in race five, benchmark 78, over the 1,800 metres. I'll just uh, get the speed map up here. You've got uh, um, Luva, how good are you, rolling forward yeah. with Hollywood hero Marquez, Holstein, Rosero, sort of three back the fence and the rest of them further than that back midfield. Where are we headed here? What do we like? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm pretty keen on how good are you here. Um, its first up run was huge in the same grade, did it on speed at a good clip uh, and finished strong. Comes here second up, finds the rail again. Um, the switch from Tim Clark to Rachel King I think I th- don't think it's an issue. I think Rachel King um, is a nice rider, can go to the front. He's a good front-running rider as well. Um, also, another thing to note, Mark, Mark West, the second favourite, ran on the same day. I know it's a different race, but um, how good are you? Um, yeah, one would have ran, sorry, three to four length quicker that, uh, that race than Mark West's race. I know it's a different race, but something to tie in. Yeah, I think... How good are you is a really good bet. It's around $2.45. Uh, I think we can have something on. There's another one at odds, though, that that uh, can run a race here. Uh, it will get back. It will get probably just worse than midfield. Oh, it's $21 now. Pirosa. It's It ran pretty nicely first up. Gets to the 1800 here. And around the $21, you could probably have a nibble. I've probably got it around that $13 mark. So if you like a little each-way play, that's probably one you can also uh, have a nibble on. Farjack, are you doing what I'm doing, just sort of saving the bullets for, for the Valley? Yeah, I haven't even looked at the form of Rose Hill, mate. I usually only do one one card anyway. I'm with you. Where are we going next, Paps? Race six at Rose Hill. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll touch on group race two. six. It's a group two, beautiful race, 1,200 metres, some some nice horses in this. Um, have you got the speed map there, Dicko, of mine, so I can – my laptop. Yeah, there's a lot of – there's a few Melbourne little ponies here. Tissue, um, just – Tying back into Farjack's story about punting and have a little punters club at Flemington, you probably ste- steamed into this thing when it just pissed in down the outside there in the carnival last last spring. It was a proper, proper that horse. The speed nice. map here, Cinderella Days, Queen of the Ball, lead, potentially. I Am Me and Zapateo off that hot, hot trial paps and they scratched last week. They go here. Zoo gotcha, Sunshine in Paris out the back with Espiona and a tissue. Yeah, it's, good. it's a great race. Um, I'm great up with what to do. I'll I'm leaning towards Zapateo. There's a bit of money for it as well, which is which is good. There was a lot of spruik around it uh, last week. It got scratched and uh, was going to go back. Draws three here, gets Zachy Lloyd on. Trialed during the week. Um, trialed very nicely. It's uh, it's going to be a very good race. I'm with Zapateo, just just ahead of I Me, probably just at the price really. Um, it's two dollars ninety versus two dollars sixty. I reckon there's more, obviously more meat in the bone. Zapateo only a little bit, but. Um, I just think that, yeah, Zapateo on top, it's trialed enormous um, and I think can really improve um, improve here off that hot hot trial, like you said. Um, but, yeah, it's a fascinating race. Queen of the Ball can be good on speed as well. Um, Sunshine in Paris is trialed very, very nicely, who 
it was really good last prep. Uh, obviously, light like race, only had the five starts, could come out and explode with Ryan Maloney on and Annabelle Neesham trained. Where Espiona's is Park, actually? Really... Just sorry to, sorry to butt in, but the, the Papley power rankings so far, Jack, he has sort of power rankings for his favourite little jocks in, in Sydney, <laughs> and it, it's been like so volatile, it's unbelievable. Um, volatile? Oh, like he started with Zach Lloyd, he threw in Pug Maloney, then he like he was in and then he was straight out. Um, it's very sort of <laughs> dependent on how they go on the horses he backs. Where are we at right now? Who's the top three riders as we head into spring? Obviously, another well, setback mate, with J-Mac doing his foot. Yeah, well, uh, I think Zachy Lloyd might have... Um, got dropped last week so he's back in there for um because of uh because j-max out so zachy lloyd's back in my top three <laughs> he'll be happy to hear that um, oh, he'll be yeah, over pug the moon Mal- zachy lloyd pug maloney so he's a queensland jockey he can uh prove himself in the sydney ranks before he can come in the top three good like it he's race nice eight's ride. the next race we're going to do run of the rose this is a proper form reference that leads into the, the golden uh the the golden rose which heads sometimes which is relevant to me and Farjack, into the Caulfield Guineas. Some very mm. expensive uh, potential stallions run around here, including the two-cylinder who won the Vein Stakes, won by Giga Kick last year. Yeah, it's uh, another good race. Like, it's just some very nice horses coming back here. Um, cylinder, like militarised, probably wants further. Uh, there's talks of that going on Cox Plate as a three-year-old. Libertad, who's who's three from three, um, doesn't know how to lose. Um, Don Corley own come back trialed very nicely. Uh, Butch Cassidy, who who was in the same race as Libertad, uh, was unlucky last start. I reckon fourteen dollars versus four forty Libertad and uh, Butch Cassidy that needs to be closer. So I think Butch Cassidy prevents value, but I can't go past Cylinder. It's just, just a just a weapon. I love the horse. Of I was on it at. Uh, Last start where it just got the bob in a very, very close photo. But, yeah, it's one of my favourite horses and um, I think this can get the job done. We'll be on speed. Nash on, who's in my top three. Um, and, yeah, I think Cylinder just gets the job done here. And um, it was, The mail around at last last start was a little bit fat in the yard, Dicko. Yeah, it, was, it got a little bit warm and hot and like paraded like a horse that's going to improve into a preparation it did start at dollar 30 though or a dollar 45 or something like that it, it's i would suggest a very very easy bet to have and I, you have my full absolute support in race eight the last race we're going to look at is race 10 it's only a benchmark 88 but uh paps alerted me last <laughs> night late last night so far jack we do a lot of work late on a wednesday trying to find angles and this is probably the greatest trial of all time talk to me paps yeah, this uh, it's a it's it's a funny one. I was talking to Dicko last night, and it's just graying me up, and just I don't know what to do with the the traditional uh, racing eleven hundred meters Rose Hill. You don't want to be wide three wide um, because it's such a tight turning corner, um, and like Airman, I've obviously only just been getting my race in the last few years, and I reckon this is one of the best trials I've seen. Uh, it just trucked along, and then. Zachy Lloyd went there for the trial, and it's. I think I think he realised, geez, I'm going too good here, and then pulled it up at the last 50 metres, and and uh, and they sort of ran over the top. But Airman trialed unbelievable, like it's lightly raced. Obviously, doesn't have the it's one once in the city. Um, doesn't have the four line form lines like Red Card, and I don't know what to do. I'm going to see how the track plays. If if they are playing down the middle a bit at um, Rose Hill, that's where you can sort of lead lead to Airman. But the other one is Red Card. If it's playing the way it usually plays, 1,100 metre races, Red Carble is the one. It trialled pretty nicely as well. Has the, has the form in uh, Queensland, listed grade one very nicely, where it ran big numbers. And that's probably the one you want to be on at the moment. But if it's playing down the middle and outside at Rose Hill, Airman's the other one. Airman's trial also, remarked, was the horse that ran second in it who came out last week and won a million-dollar race. So I, mm, I reckon so it's there's... just red, red hot. I've oh, actually... like. I've actually um like you like the four dollars and four sixty. I'll probably back both of them on the day anyway. Like it's a good enough value to. I've got them both. Let's head now to Mooney Valley. The rails in the true. Uh, Far Jack, talk to me about the valley. Cops a lot of grief. Uh, our man, our mate G Hall, loves to sort of like stirring it up a little bit just to try and get. It. He's kind of happier to take on the track staff than a than an actual participant who sits on the back of them or trains one. And yeah. uh, this this track's been under a lot of pressure. How, how do you handle the valley, and, and do you get scared 
uh, like trusting it to better, if that makes sense. Yeah, it, it's just, it's tough. I think you've got to try and find the patterns of the horses that naturally like it, um, which is what scares me a lot about back in Globe here. I think Globe's like untapped talent, but if it doesn't work around the valley well, I was actually hoping to get down to track work on Tuesday morning, but because I had to fly up here, I didn't get down to watch it gallop. But if you can't get around that bend and if, if you can't deal with it, then it, it's it's trouble. And then you, you add in the fact that it's been leaderish for however long now and that they haven't years. seemed to adjust that then you know it's it's a anyone's game but i i honestly think that it they'll probably have it fixed up by the time the spring comes around like it didn't play bad last last manicado and last um cox plate which is the big ones the important ones so i'm, I'm confident the track will get it right I, I think that the tempo dictates the pattern more often than not and if, if you walk early it's pretty hard to catch them on the top yeah, well, end of the valley it's a bit of a, it, it's a bit of a like self-fulfilling prophecy sometimes as well as where the guys go out and you have to lead, you have to lead and they'll go to the front and push hard. And then the pace is so hot that they will get run over. Like in, mm. you know, in race five, you got that center fire that Benny Allen's on and that's what happened with it. They came out and went quick and he came from the back. <laughs> you know your stuff. Yes. That's exactly what happened. <laughs> and it was the only horse to run on that whole day, but they burnt the candle too hard at the start. And, yeah. they, and then because they burnt the candle too hard at the start they try, they try and take that cheeky little breather at like the 600 to the 400 and all that does is like close the elastic band and the horse at the back's doing no work to, to to shorten that margin and have the momentum so the tactics of the riders and the jockeys uh, and the trainers is key to, to handling the valley and if your horse isn't going to be suited well, there's a lot of other options for you to run your horse where do you want to start do you want to start in race four because i've got one that's just going to win yeah you go race four for sure recommendation anchors all multis gamble responsibly but like this is the easiest bet of all time it's race fit it's second up carlene's airborne it'll roll forward it'll sit outside corner pocket it'll kick on the corner and it'll be winning that's race four number five recommendation for the kieran ma dave oosters camp and i absolutely I'm- can't I can't add any comments i can't disagree with you there perfect so that's anchor and multis all weekend righto the next race we're going to talk about, this is a great race, phenomenal race. There's angles absolutely everywhere here. It is race six. Have you got any views here, Farjack? Race six, yeah, I do actually. Um, so I'm probably going to have a go at inhibitions at the odds there. I think um, Ben Malum, Ben Malum will handle it well. He'll, he'll, he'll find the right spot from barrier six. And uh, I liked its last run. Um, Charmstone, bit of a question mark for me. I know Damien Lane's on board, but yeah, I'm going to have a go at inhibition. Um, the other one I like is that Molly Nickers, that completely untapped. No idea what, what that horse's ceiling is. And Catherine Coleman obviously speaks very, very highly of it. So lo- lots of angles on this one. I'm not betting with a lot of confidence in this race at all. So it'll be a real small unit play for me on inhibitions. I think Oz Empress will roll forward from seven. Uh, Pride of Sullivan will kick up from four. Was ridden sort of half cold and cuddled last start. This was the day that they watered the inside off the heavy bias the, the week, the two weeks prior, which was to the detriment of Pride of Sullivan last start. Beauty Rising missed the start five lengths and was very good behind inhibitions. So I think if you like inhibitions far, you need to have something Beauty Rising just off the SPs. It was a good, good run last start. I, I really like Molly Nickers and I love Charmstone as horses. I don't think they suited the value of those barriers. And I thought right to party was absolutely enormous last start and is a nice horse. Let it go probably without me again this week and then wait for it next start, probably hopefully to Flemington or Caulfield. Uh, if you want to bet, I think the bet is the 10 uh, Pride of Sullivan. I just think it was very, very good when it unsuited last start and we'll get every possible on the map. Uh, the next race, race eight, Giga Kick, uh, potentially the best horse in the country. Where do we sit on that? Yeah. Perhaps, have you got a best horse in the country right now? Oh, mate, Auric, I'll, you got it's easy to lean with Giga Kick. I, the way, uh, the best horse in the country, it's a hard one. Like the way I'm thinking is that if the way In Secret ran last week over the thousand meters, if In Secret was to beat Giga Kick, where does that rank in as the best horse in the country? Mm. Or do we look? Are we looking at uh, Milers, uh, Wait for Age horses? 
Like how how are we how are we ranking the best horse in the country? If you know, we're going, what I'm saying? We're going like thousand, thousand or four hundred meters. Which horse do you want? Do you want in secret by the sound of you? Nah, not until not until if in secret was to beat Giga Kick. I've got Giga Kick on top, but if in secret was to beat Giga Kick, I'm going in secret. All right. Five, you got a view this race. It's a it's a pretty nice race, isn't it? This is the McKillen yeah, Stakes that Rothfire won last year. Yep. Um. So, I think I don't know if Giga Kick handles the valley. You just don't know. Like a big question mark. I know Imperatrix handles the valley. The valley like came sat six pairs back mm, um, in the William Reed against the best valley horse that I've seen in the last few years, which is Balanipatina. Right, and Balanipatina came around and went, oh well, this is Bala's race. It's the valley. She loves it. Here she goes again. And Imperatrix <laughs> came up, went straight past her, and did it almost arrogantly. Yep. Like it was, it was a had the right lane, I think, but it was it was arrogant the way it won. So. Um, look, Giga Kick. I thought it was going to be in that in at that dollar seventy mark, and I wasn't going to go near it. But it looks like it might sort of get out towards the the two dollar mark. So, which is making me think, you know, I might have a go. But I, I, I'm probably I've got Imperatries on top, so I'll have a I'll have a I'll back Imperatries and then see what happens on the day in terms of where Giga Kick's at in the market. I love what you're saying, and I'm thoroughly impressed with your knowledge. Um, my chink for both horses is a thousand meters. I think a thousand meter horses win a thousand meter races. Now they are class by a mile, fair. But like Imperatrice hasn't been over a thousand meters on a racetrack, I don't think, and not recently. That's the chink, and they're both going to be, I think, worse mm-hmm. in midfield. And there's this little speed demons here, handlebars down, operators. The speed map here is chaos. And I really like one. I think Zoo Style probably should have won this race last year. It half missed the start and all he had to dig it up to get sort of outside lead and just got run over. The trials yeah. was, were, were fair. And, and I'd happily be with Rothfire or Zoo Style. It's just the market's t- giving me double the price for Zoo Style. So I'm going to yeah. have a good bet, Zoo Style. It's my best value play on the card at Mooney Valley. Just off the prices. Gear Kick, I think, is the most likely winner of the race. But Zoo Style is the easiest bet to have in the race. You could back it each way. Uh, I think it sets up nicely uh, for, for D Oliver, the GOAT, to kick off his retirement um, sort of caravan tour of Australian group, group racing. It's funny, Dicko. We get, um, you get some people sort of hanging out in the lobby where, where the UFC fighters all, all get put up. And I went down to collect me breakfast this morning and somebody goes to me, Oi, Barjack. Oi, Rothfire. Rothfire. I'm not Rothfire. goes, Zoo Style. Zoo Style is going to roll giggy kick. Like, all right. <laughs> Well, he might be Sweet. right. Let's hope he's right. Yeah, yeah. So that's good. Good omen. Oh, I think there's a chance Gig Kick gets out to sort of two fifty two if you're playing at home, maybe yeah. two thirty. It'll just be the big boys won't be sure what to do with Gig Kick and 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 um, Imperatres who take up market percentage here over a thousand meters off that map at the Valley. Mm-hmm. I think they both soften in betting. I think Zoo Style will will firm. The last race we're going to talk about is Globes race. This is a phenomenal race and a good addition sometimes this is a weak weak race on the calendar this is a fat fee in stakes it's a group two weight for age there's an enormous field the speed map's pretty busy and the horse we're going to focus on at the start with far jack we he wanted to talk about this before we even got here is globe yeah so globe he draws barrier 12 probably not ideal um and, you know, you hear Mick Price talk about it and, and, and they've obviously had a little bit of trouble. He's a five-year-old and it carries on like a two-year-old at the, like, at sales. Like, he just flops around, goes sideways when he straightens up and, uh, you know, mm-hmm. I think that plays really heavily against him at a track like the Valley. You know, I know we talk, like, last year you come out and you try and find the internationals that are going to suit the Valley. Like, when Al Bodegon came out, at breakfast with the best, you see our body gone and you go, that's a valley horse. Like, a bit of a slider frame, looks like it's going to get around well. And you look at Globe and you go, absolutely not a horse for the valley. That's not saying they can't get it yeah. done, but it just doesn't look like the the, the track's Piece of the puzzle. Suit. It's just another little piece we've got to, we've got to try yeah. and factor into our price and our decision. 100%. But in saying that, untapped ability and at three bucks, like, you, you're getting good value for it. If it was in, you know, low twos, you know, I probably wouldn't go near it. But at three bucks, if I can get over three bucks for it, I'll definitely have a go of Globe. <laughs> I am so impressed by your <laughs> horse racing now. That's exactly how I see this race. <clears throat> he's got the I think it's the perfect barrier because he's a bit of a thinker and a bit of a bit of a bit of trouble. So and it's the perfect rider. She's got the softest hands in racing. She's got great balance. 
She can cuddle this thing when it needs to be cuddled. She can stand over it if she needs to stand over him. I think the perfect barrier, the trials are as good as trials get. They're not airman trials, but they're very good trials. I think he's a $2.40 shot, and I think he's a huge bet at three ten. You can get three ten right now. I totally agree. They could have opened this horse two twenty. Yeah. You know, and then it is a hard decision. Uh, I, I think he's a very, very easy bet to have at 310. He's the best bet for me at the Valley on Saturday. I think Luna Flair's f- flying, but it's in the Caulfield Cup. It'll just be a little tick over. Um, pinstriped is interesting. Was back to beat Mr. Brightside, who's as good as we got over this distance last start. It was 15s in a 750. Uh, but I just think the map's perfect. I like the wide draw. She can do what she wants. Jay Carr, she'll be... This is. I, I just love this horse and I love this bet. Globe. Love it, love it. I reckon that's ponies, guys. I think we're done. Fire Jack, you've that's been us. absolutely enormous. I cannot wait for Sunday. I'm so excited. I'm going to be watching. I can't get there. I've got two small kids. Great. Uh, with... You can't wait for Sunday. I can't wait for tomorrow at 4 p.m. when I can eat. <laughs> it's just a huge weekend. We've got. You're going to get to watch the footy on Friday night. What, what Mate, are you going to do so for the when footy? They told me right. So listen to this. So my week when I looked at it two weeks ago when the boys made the finals, I went right. I still thought I was weighing in on. Um, Saturday morning. So I've gone, right, I'm going to be sitting there dehydrated, hungry out of my mind, <laughs> trying to watch the swans. And like, it's just going to be a miserable experience. And now they've flipped that and it's done a 180. I'm going to be sitting in this bed, TV on, <laughs> volume 100, eating some rice and chicken, a little Powerade next to me. It's going to be brilliant. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a, it sets up for a phenomenal weekend you've got the footy Friday night we've got the pony Saturday and then we've got the big fight on Sunday uh, we wish you the best of luck man we'll be cheering for you we'll be watching and thank you very much for coming on the early crow nah thanks good for having luck, me brother. boys it was a good chat thanks for coming I think it's time to talk hug the league oh hospital pass oh the lizard's lick lizard's oh, lick. how good's that going to be oh. NRL finals, perhaps it's uh, it's 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 upon us, and it, it sets up for, for a fairly juicy sort of weekend. We kick off with the Broncos, a dollar sixty versus Storm, two thirty five. The lines four and a half, up there in Brisbane. It's it's a it's a repeat of what we saw last week with basically different lists though, because they they sort of played the twos a little bit. Um, this sets up to be one of the all time great rugby league games, in my opinion. Thoughts? Who are you going with? Um, I'm a Victorian. Who do you think I'm going with? I'm going with Storm. <laughs> I'm a Victorian as well, but, but I'm a Victorian, but I'm punting with my head here, not my heart. <laughs> Ooh, playing, playing with my head. I think I think this is this is built up beautifully for for Reynolds. He's they've got him in for this exact reason. Big games, get them to the they've got in a good position. I think Broncos and and Penrith are better than the other other six sides comfortably. And I think Reynolds back in. Uh, he's had a good rest. He's experienced. So yeah, he might be a little bit underdone, but um, good experienced players get themselves right for this moment. He's, a, I reckon, he's a very good player. He's massive for the Broncos. When he's when he's in the team firing, they they're hard to stop. And the Storm probably have that. What's they've got a very good history against the Broncos. Oh, they're that, like, they're that just, right? they own them up there. They own big them. big big hoodoo. And it's I reckon a, it's a massive it's, game. Um, Who's the biggest game player in rugby league? Uh, Munster is he? Cameron Munster. Yeah, but I don't know. We'll, let's, what do you reckon? Let's have a um, let's, let's have bet. a nice lunch. Let's have a nice lunch on it mm. after our game of golf and I wipe your ass. <coughs> <laughs> right, I work, work right. the four and a half line. That's no, what we're or something. On. Four and a half line, yeah. Yeah. And if you just got to clarify that sort of stuff with you, you know, not putting in golf cards, trying to get the raw name. Well, it, cup, you, well, you, yeah. it wouldn't be, wouldn't be that surprise if you were trying to take dollar sixty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, lunch I'll on buy, this I'll game you, between us. I'll buy you two lunches if Storm win. <laughs> oh, you want to go just head to head? Yeah, I'll buy you two lunches. You, oh, you buy me one. Done. Done. I'll bring. A, <laughs> I'll bring a mate. Um, Panthers a dollar twenty versus the Warriors four fifty. The Lions twelve and a half. The Warriors coming off uh, they rested their boys against uh, the Dolphins. God bless them and God bless the Dolphins. Shout out to the Finn. Got it done for us. Uh, Panthers miss missing Luai the the, the five eight. Um, mm. That's about it. 
what are we doing? Yeah, said before, Penrith is clear, clear uh, on top here. I reckon they can cover the line, if I'm honest. Uh, very good quality side. Their defence is elite. Um, I, I don't think the Warriors can score enough tries to be to get within 12 points. Um, so I'm pretty confident with Penrith here, obviously at home, uh, Blue Bat Stadium in Penrith there. Um, and I think, yeah, Penrith are very, very good bets here at, at home as well. I wouldn't mind looking at the unders, uh, but I think Penrith will cover. I think the Warriors, but it would be great for rugby league if the Warriors were to cause an upset here to really open up this season. Uh, the yeah, next game, Sharks, the real fin, take on the Roosters, the Chooks, the Sharks, dollar ninety five, the Chooks, a buck eighty five. The Lions, one and a half. Uh, this is the the tightest contest. They're telling us the the corporates across the weekend. Um, what are we doing here? Yeah, it's obviously a bit of talk around the around the uh, where it's played at because of the suburban ground. Uh, it favours the Sharks, obviously, and full credit to them. I reckon. I suppose it, there's a it's a bit of controversy because uh, in in the AFL, Geelong can't can't do the same. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, it's a well, look, full credit to the Sharks. They earned the right for a home final. Um, also, they, they don't get as many fans there anyway. They obviously get a few more than the suburban ground, but they're not getting the, the 50, 60,000 there that they would like the AFL. So mm. I reckon it's fair enough for the Sharks to have a home final. Um, and I'm, yeah, with the Sharks, Haynes is, is really getting in f- um, form. Um, and I reckon the Roosters have got Tupo, JWH out, and Manu. Big outs for finals, big players. Mm. So I'm with the Sharks at home. I don't trust the Sharks. But I don't like the Roosters. Ooh. I um I lean to the Sharks because I, I was uh, born and bred in the Sutherland Shire. The Shark Park will be absolutely fucking heaving. And if uh, you plan on going northies, <laughs> I'd get there real early because it's just going to be pumping. <laughs> uh, it's a great night for the Shire. Um, I'd, I'd love to be there. So I'll probably I'll probably fall into the Sharks if you push me hard enough for our tip sheet, which we will release uh, sometime Thursday. Arvo. Uh, for the weekend's games, the last game, the Knights dollar twenty two, the Raiders four thirty, the Lions twelve and a half. The Knights, they have timed their run to perfection, and the Raiders, uh, even when we kicked off six weeks ago with the Liz, you and the Liz are anti milk. You hate the milk, and they just yeah. stuck around. They've just hung around just enough. There was a painful non cover by the milk versus the Broncos, where we had an eleven and a half line or a ten and a half line, and they lost by eleven. Uh, they come up here, they got a 12.5 point head start. Is this just, are we just all in Newy? Because I want to be all in Newcastle and you're almost always anti the the, the, the milk, the radius. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah, I think the Knights can, Knights will win. I'm not sure, like, I'm obviously not taking the $1.20. Uh, the line, look, the line, what is the line? Sorry, I'm just getting it up here. 12.5. 12, like, I don't. I don't. I don't want to be taking that line if I'm honest. But I think the 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 Knights will win. And like I don't know if you can like if you want to have a little cheeky multi, you can put the Sharks into Penrith into into the Knights if you, if you're confident with the Sharks. But you do you. Um, but yeah, I think gamble responsibly. You I do think, you. Um, or or you can put the Broncos in, which is also you do you. I know Dicko won't be doing that, but. Um, yeah, I think the Knights will be winning. <laughs> right, we'll have our tip sheet out on our socials uh, this afternoon, Thursday afternoon. That's Rugby League. We're going to finish off real quick just with a little bit of a, an update, what you can expect to find if you go to our socials. On a Sunday moving forward, we're going to have an NFL tipping comp, tipping, and it's a little uh, competition amongst friends. Tom's recruited Justin McInerney, uh Sleepy Juz, as he calls him, or I call him, um, I've got Matty Punts, one of my oldest and dearest mates, who's a sick, sick man. And Paps and I, we're going to have three to five picks at the line on the NFL each and every Sunday. Now, the loser of the four will be paying for a round of golf wherever we want and lunch, bit of a cost. And the winner of this competition at the end of the season will win a 2.5% share in a mailbag bloodstock horse. So make sure you uh, find us on Instagram, TikTok, uh, Twitter, and those players will be up our tip sheets and maybe some some video content on a Sunday. Uh, Tom, I reckon that's all about. That's a, that's that's a big show. Uh, we've we've covered a fair bit of ground. 
full credit to massive show Jack Jenkins thanks to thanks to Far it was a great chat and look forward to tomorrow night and of course Sunday um, when he's fighting cannot wait cannot wait I hope you enjoyed the show uh, please get around us and uh, we'll see you next week on the early crow thank you for listening to the early crow follow the socials immediately you already should but if you're not do it again make sure you have because we will be giving out our staking plans for Saturday's racing across our socials. Yeah, bye for now.